another one second viewing, guys. Roll up your sleeves, pour another drink. This is Off the Cuff. All right, well, I'm Kyle. I'm Dan. Get ready for a real fun episode here, guys. This is this is our second time doing Off the Cuff. So um, last time around, we watched a new movie in theaters, and that was Fantastic Beasts and Where to Blah, 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 Blah. <laughs> um, <laughs> this time around, um, we're just going to do a movie that's been out for... What's like nine years now? Well, um, we, yeah, we wanted to cover this movie because it it it, <laughs> it flew under the radar. Wowzers! Um, I don't think it did actually. This movie was very well advertised. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but it. <laughs> Sorry, this movie, I this movie was everywhere. Russell. It's a bit of a meme currently. Um, uh, this movie we're doing today is B movie, not the B movie, B movie, but B movie. B movie. Um, B E E. Which is ironic because. Don't like often like shitty movies be called like B movies. That's a good thing. Is it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure like you know like the room or like. That's um, a B movie. It's like oh, it's like a B movie, like a cheesy like bad. What is it? Is it a re direct reference to this movie or is it no, no, just no, no, saying no. It's like, like it's, it's an like A B. plus or exactly, a B? Exactly, like B. Like it's, yeah, like it's yeah, a yeah. B movie. Yeah, and that's an older term. I think that predates definitely 2007. Right. Well, <laughs> so now it's ironic. We're think that's a, yeah. Do you think that's a bad marketing decision? On the, on it, the might, it might have been it, intentional. I'm not sure, but um, I'll read you the Wikipedia description, which is also a hashtag on Instagram. I will point that out. Is that, it really? Oh yeah. <laughs> B movie is a 2007 American computer animated family comedy film produced by DreamWorks Animation and distributed by Paramount Pictures. It stars Jerry Seinfeld and Renee Zellweger. Um, that's pretty much all you need to know. What's this... wrong with that combination? First of all. Well, I mean, I'm just gonna pull up Jerry Seinfeld because what's that guy even doing these days? Like, I'd be curious to know. <laughs> um, so while you're while you're doing that, I'd like to say that I just want to point out that in 2005, Comedy Central named him the 12th greatest stand-up of all time. The 12th. The 12th. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, you know, 12th not that. bad. That's not all terrible. Right. It's not uh, terrible. I'd I'd be curious to know now who number one is. I don't even that care. Might be I really don't care. He the last thing he was in was in 2014. He was in top five, where he played himself, but he was actually uncredited. <laughs> <laughs> That was a movie Top with uh, five. Uh, that was with uh, Chris Rock. It's a pretty good movie actually. He plays like a famous yeah. comedian. Fuck, not to think about it. It's stupid, but he plays like a famous comedian and like it's just like his struggles with like coming to terms that his comedies kind of suck and he wants to go back to basics and it's uh, not bad. It's an okay movie, but I don't remember Jerry Seinfeld in it. <laughs> then again, I I, I kind of forget the movie. It was a while ago, but whatever. All right. When I saw Work on the other hand, I feel like that chick's not too busy. She was in Bridget Jones's Baby this year, which uh, is the third Bridget Jones movie. What? Yeah. The first one came out in 2001. That was Bridget Jones's Diary. Okay. That's the only one I have a recollection of. Yeah, me too. And then there's a second one. I remember this one coming out Bridget Jones, The Edge of Reason. Which sounds uh, more like it, an action film to me. <laughs> it does. It sounds like it's a fucking spy film or something. The Edge of Reason. And then literally like 12 years later, she did Bridget Jones's Baby. That came out this year. That could also be a spy film. You know, I can imagine Mission Bridget Impossible. Jones's baby. Mission, Mission Impossible, Impossible 12. Bridget. Tom Cruise's Baby. <laughs> Tom Cruise's Baby. Surrey Cruise stars in fucking <laughs> Mission Impossible 12. Well, All right. So that being at? said, let's get into the movie. Yeah, rip a little bit of a cloud there. Um, now, I gotta say, Kyle, and I think we feel we're the, pretty much on the same page with this. Um, is I, in all honesty put this movie on three different times um i paid very little attention the first time or it didn't hold my attention i don't know what's to be said about the first viewing the first most recent viewing um the second one i did pay attention the third one gone again okay. lost it, I, it Wait, did hold not on. hold my attention <laughs> hold up. why'd you watch it a third time if you saw it the second time i felt you... like i was missing something i felt like <laughs> <laughs> Dude, <laughs> there's not much to miss after after i watched the movie the first and second time i kind of i was like god damn it i'm not i'm really did i get everything is that everything that happened <laughs> am i sure did i miss something i just need to clarify what's really going quick on is on this... the wikipedia page it literally says not to be confused with letter b movie <laughs> <laughs> so we called it we called that one 
a B movie is a low budget commercial movie that is not an art house film. That's the description on Wikipedia. <laughs> Anyways, um, okay, well, <coughs> let's rewind slightly. Did you watch this? Like, did you see this movie when it came out? Um, uh, a few weeks uh, after it was released. Yeah, to, so like you saw it like yeah. when it came out. Yeah, I think I gosh, I think I saw it either on TV. Or, like, I rented it for some reason or something. I don't think I went to the theater. Like, I think I... I s- no, I saw, I, what I mean is I saw it a few weeks after it was released to DVD, I think. Okay, okay. So, I, I had downloaded this movie. I remember this movie was everywhere when point. it came out. Like, maybe I was just watching a lot of ABC or NBC. No, you're right. I like, remember hearing a lot about it. Yeah, well, there was adverts I everywhere. I feel like... The, oh, gosh, yeah. maybe it says... But I'm sure the marketing, like, budget on this was huge. Actually, holy fuck. The budget for a B-movie was $150 million, which is actually quite a lot for an animated film. Like... I mean, that's, I mean, there's other movies like Pixar and Disney will definitely have that, but like. If you were to guess, what would be the average for most animated films? Uh, like it depends. Under 100 mil? I mean, like, you got things like Kubo that are made for like 30, but, and they're like a lot more work and more technical, but. Right. Yeah, no, I would, I would say the average would maybe be like 80 mil. Okay. Again, like a nice Adam Sandler average going on there. <laughs> um, yeah, but this movie that, made that, uh, can we just coin that term really quick the Adam, the Sandler, Adam Sandler, average. Sandler average that's a mil. TSV first here guys that's 80 so, mil if, yeah so We've if you ever watch your future, future episodes just note that if we mention an Adam Sandler average, average. 80 million dollars <laughs> that's um, an ASA go watch our uh, oh, fuck did we do Jack and Jill no we did it. we did uh, Funny People yeah go watch that that's a good movie Actually, it, one of the few good Adam Sandler movies Maybe the these only. days. Um, no, I'd anyways, say that was what 2000. Uh, that we're was talking about ago. different movies. So besides the point of this, but anyways, but this movie ended up making 287 million dollars. So it, it made well. It made well over. I its would budget. venture to say that that's because of advertising. I think if they didn't advertise so for this movie correctly, um, they likely would have gone under. It's a strange concept. Like the thing about. I think about DreamWorks movies, especially, maybe not lately, because they're a little bit more, they're trying to catch up with Disney, and they kind of have been a bit. Anyways, the thing about DreamWorks is, like, they're the kind of company that, like, signs off as, like, Shrek as a character, or, like, a B as a character. Like, they're really strange, really strange, like, uh... It's like they're, they're very much trying to be different. They're trying to separate yeah, themselves, so it's, they're it's, trying to pull I mean, something different off. I feel like B-Movie might have been when they noticed they were taking it too far. <laughs> It, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but I feel like we're down talking the movie, and I don't want to do that no, because the movie's it's okay. The movie's yeah. okay. Like it's not a shit movie. The only thing, like I would say, my biggest, I guess, criticism. I don't know what you would call it. It's like the movie's trying to be for adults, but it fails at doing that. It's yeah like, because it it dumbs down the content. Like I mean, a lot of a lot of uh, animated films or even kids movies or whatever. Like there's always a. Uh, there's always like a sexual innuendo or like a couple jokes for the adults to laugh at it too with the kids and it's it becomes a family movie then whatever like that's fine that's always been in that's cool but um this one tries a different thing where it's like they try to use like adult humor in a kids movie yeah it's like like it's this strictly like not even adult humor as in like provocative or sexual like adult humor as in like the kind of conversation adults would have Right? Does yeah, that make sense? but in a in a weird sarcastic Jerry Seinfeld type <laughs> way, it's uh, Why? it's like uh, it, it's trying to be a little bit overly educational and yeah. uh, looking into it afterwards that not everything in this movie is a hundred percent accurate. Uh, well, I mean, the thing but, is, like, save the bees. Like, that's fair, I guess, right? Like, yes, I mean, there's that, a, that'd be the overall theme, really. Of the it's movie. like I mean, like in two thousand and seven, like. Ugh, this is fucking, this is bullshit. I think there was some B propaganda going on at the time where it was like... <laughs> there was, and like 2007 was totally like the green era. Like, you gotta go green. Wait, this movie came out in 2007? Yeah, it's pretty old now. It's wow, I didn't old. realize it was that old. Yeah, I mean, the movie... Okay, well, hold on. This all, I'll finish my thought. Uh, this, is, this is during like, uh, especially on TV, I felt a lot. Like, really like, there was an emphasis on like going green and like how to be green efficient and like... Yeah, a lot of yeah. movies were like *Inconvenient Truth*. I can't think came out in two thousand six, two thousand seven. The Al Gore documentary thing about global warming. Uh, all and like Al Gore. Yeah. Fucking. I mean, that's great. No, it's fair. I think it's important. But like, it's so shoehorned in this movie. It's like it. It like no kid is gonna like care. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Like, if you want to watch a good movie about the environment and being green, watch Wally. That's a yeah. way better movie about that. <laughs> Wally's way better. It's 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 maybe not subtle about it, but like you get it in the first like three minutes of the movie. Yeah. B movie. Point made, and now it the the yeah. the. the and now we can focus on the actual film. In B movie, they literally have court sessions, like arguing against like whose ideas are better than the others. <laughs> Got to be the most boring part of the movie for me. Can like, we like? Ugh. Can we bring up like how like I feel like the West Wing keeps showing up in movies? Like yeah. we watched Captain America: Civil War. Fuck me! Can we? Can we please leave the politics at home? Yeah, let's I'm trying to chill. watch a movie here. I'm not trying to watch the fucking news, dude. Like I'm do more, not bring your politics into my movies. Like, well, fuck right up. You can, like to an extent. Sure. You can bring political views, but I think it should be more um, subtle. I guess more or less. Yes, I, I like political awareness That's I think fine. if you're trying to make a point and your movie touches a theme and you want to make a point on that theme that seems fine. sure go for it but I mean, there's movies that do it right and there's movies that don't do it right and this movie became too educational and too uh political standing for me but it's like, in a certain way it's like at what point am i going to care what the environment is trying to, or what i'm what i should do for the environment coming from b movie yeah is this going to be the movie that tells me fuck, you know, I should maybe use less water. Yeah. Oh, shit, I shouldn't kill a bee next time I see it. And you know what? No, um, it's I not. Th- I, th- I think I'm generally, I'm, I'm for that. If I feel that way after a movie, yeah, then leave that job. up to me, but yeah. don't, like, force that opinion down my throat. If I wanted to really know more about that subject, I'd probably look look up other forms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, entertainment. Like, I likely wouldn't be watching um, a fictional <laughs> animated movie okay. about it I'd probably be watching either a documentary um, an educational film or something like yeah if, I, like yeah. You, if you want to learn something you go into something with that intention there's yeah there's sources to go to when you're I mean, looking for okay, that well, kind of education I don't know I think like animated movies can teach things Wally's a great example uh, that Zootopia movie is is not bad to do that um but, like, this is a movie where literally a bee falls in love with a human being. I have a relationship. <laughs> it's a fucking weird movie. It's conflicting a little bit. Like, I, I I have problems with this movie. I don't think it's a horrible movie. I think it's no, an okay it's watch. It I looks think. good, too. I think the animation's not bad for it being all, like, CGI animation. It's okay. Yeah. And for... Exactly. And the year it came out, you know, it's fine. And for, you know what, for viewers with uh, with kids out there, yeah, this is going to be a movie that you're probably going to watch at some point, Keep but it. it's not going to be a movie that you're going to watch 10 times. And thank God you're not, because to be honest, after four times in total for me watching this flick, uh, I, I I don't think I could do it again. I'm never a fan of like... like it's like, oh, it's for the kids. Kids will like it. Kids will like anything. You put anything animated in 100%. front of a kid, and they'll watch it, and they'll think it's dope. That's you, you give a kid a goddamn elastic fucking band. Dude, four hours later, a kid's still playing with the thing. So, in my opinion... <sighs> but B-Movie's yeah. trying to be, like, meta, I feel. You know, it's trying to be, like, really self-aware of what it is. Like, it's trying to be really clever. I, I think... What we mentioned before, the fact that they spent so much money on marketing and that we've seen so much advertising for the B-movie says it all. Uh, They spent everything on marketing and they reinforced the movie to fit their marketing. And so (laughs) the idea with this film, in in, in my personal opinion, was to not be horrible and to make a lot of money. To which it did. I mean, it near doubled its budget, right? It's pretty close. And I think... No, it's... Okay, fine. Can you know what... In retrospect, whatever, you know, B-Movie was successful. It's a fine movie. Um, maybe we should just briefly talk about, like, why I thought we should talk about this movie, which is more or less just, like, the memes, <laughs> which you weren't aware of until I just brought it up to you. I had no idea. This, uh, this movie... Not a meme lord. Okay, man, I'm... I'm catching up. This is actually... The meme's probably dead by the time we post this, I'll be honest. <laughs> but, uh... Okay, it started out being, like, a... Like a like a copy and paste post sort of thing, where like you'd be on like board like forums or whatever, Reddit, whatever, and then people would just copy and paste the entire script to B movie and paste it as a gag. As a gag, yeah. Okay. And, and that became a thing, and then there started being like T-shirts funny. with the entire script of B movie on it, <laughs> and like all this shit. And now, I mean, you get great videos like B movie, except every time they say B, it gets sped up. 
uh, or B movie except the screen's yellow and it's an hour and a half and there's no audio. Okay. <laughs> or like, you know, B movie except there's no Bs. I don't fucking know. It's. I think, <laughs> it still doesn't really make sense to me why this became a thing. But well, I mean, memes. Like that's like anything on the internet. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. can't just you can't explain. I mean, the origin's gotta, always so small and it makes no sense. If you want to live the meme lord life, you gotta. You gotta be a meme lord, basically. You gotta be. A meme lord. Oh, fuck me, dude. Like I think. I think the reason it is a meme, maybe, is because it's just a really fucking weird movie. Like, it is. It, it really is. It's man. so it's strange. And also, like, I mean, movie. it was successful. I'm almost surprised they didn't make a sequel, I'll be honest. <laughs> Movies like this almost always get a sequel. <laughs> and it didn't. This is like a weird flagship, like, project for Jerry Seinfeld. Like, this was like a... It almost felt like a passion project. Like, it was like his, like... Maybe the dude was really passionate about bees. I don't fucking know. Lost himself in the educational. It's literally uh, so strange. It's a very strange it's, movie. It's it's a strange movie. Would I say is it worth a watch? Yeah, I guess. I think, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's, it's worth a watch. M- now more now than ever, it's yeah. worth a watch for me movie. We will maybe on an end note, <laughs> we will mention that uh, Simon J. Smith, the director of this movie, also directed one of Daniel's favorite movies ever. Oh fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> can you uh, can you elaborate? I hate what? this fucking movie. Is it a movie though? I was Can you tell a, the story quick? It's like, it's like almost not a movie. It's an experience. I went to fucking... I was a kid. I'm like... Maybe I'm 12 or 14-ish. I don't know. I'm a kid. I go to Florida with the family. Um, it's a good time, man. We're hitting up rides. We're doing all sorts of shit now. The time comes where the other couple of groups of families that were... Or the other families were with... Um, their kids want to go see Shrek. But it's not just Shrek. It's not just Shrek. It's Shrek... In four motherfucking D. If you're wondering what the fourth dimension is, it's fucking stink bombs and squirts and all kinds of slimes and all kinds of shit. So, dude, I'm 12 to 14. I'm trying to pick up a. I'm I'm trying to pick up a chick. All what? right. I'm trying to look cool. In I'm Shrek like, 40. No, like in general in Florida, man. I'm on vacay. Okay. You know what I mean. I'm trying to chick pick up a chick in my resort. I'm trying to go swimming with this girl. Maybe I'm gonna kiss this girl. Wow. You know what I'm saying? X-rated right now. <laughs> next, yeah, be prepared. Then, next thing you know, I'm walking into Shrek fucking 4D. I got slime in my face. I got stink bombs light enough. There's all kinds of squirts and farts and all kinds of bullshit sprayed at me. It's probably the worst experience of my life, man. I walked out of this movie going, fuck me. But I'm trying to be a nice guy and be like, yeah, it was really fun, mom and dad. Everyone else seemed to be having a good time, so I'm trying to pretend to have a good time. Anyways, to make a long story short, I don't like Shrek in general. Fucking hate Shrek, and it's likely because of that experience. I mean, it's it's funny that you bring that up because like somebody once told me that the world is gonna roll me. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, shed. right? So I think either it's Simon J. Smith. I just think it's hilarious that this guy also directed B movie. I will mention that one of the first. This is going back in the archives of the second viewing. But the first things we ever did was actually talk about Daniel's story about Shrek 4D. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> so it's kind of hilarious. I, we actually like just looked this up. Like, I didn't know that. I had no idea. Had no idea. He's known for making Shrek 4D, a short film based off the animated film Mega Mind, yeah. voiced by Will Ferrell. Oh, and God. also the um, Penguins of Madagascar movie, which I didn't know existed. To be honest. <laughs> I heard about this movie vaguely. Give the last thought I want to leave you guys with before we go here is why isn't there a bridge to Terabithia 2? Wow. (laughs) Okay. We'll get to that one day. That's for sure. Let's Um, hope. I would, just to clarify, I will recommend B-Movie. I've decided. Yeah. So go watch B-Movie. Honestly, like download it and maybe just like skip through it. You know, watch maybe like, it's an hour and a half movie, but maybe watch about like 45 of it. I guarantee there's probably a couple of bits that you'll enjoy. Oh, uh, the Chris Rock mosquito scene's the only part worthy. Of yeah. It. I won't, we won't maybe ruin it too much for you, but. Uh, Generally, that's Then again, this is a nine year old movie, so I think spoilers are not a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm Kyle. I'm Dan. Talk to you guys later.